I'm Casey Stone with Clear Story Design, and this is the Fowl House. It was built in 1928 and 1929, and we have been restoring it for the last six, seven months. Now this week, we felt like we were making a lot of progress. We got a lot of things done, and then we hit a problem. So it was a little bit of two steps forward and two steps back. Stay tuned to find out all about it. Um, this house has sash cords, which if you don't know what that is, you'll learn. I'll do a video about it, but there are weights on these cords that make the windows roll up and down, but a lot of them are broken. So the way that you repair that is you have to pop this trim off and the weight is right there on the broken cord. So we will replace that cord, which is really just rope put the weight back in, run it back through, and then those windows will work. So stay tuned for a sash cord tutorial. All right, I told you that we were getting ready to start working on sash cords and window weights. Now, if you don't know what that is, this is a window weight. And when everything's working properly, there are four of these in every window, two for the top, two for the bottom. But over time, these old ropes break. So we've popped the trim off of every window that needs attention. We're gonna pop the window out and then replace the cord with new cord. All right, so if you look here, there is a wheel and a sash cord. So there is a weight attached to that that's running inside this trim. On this side, the wheel is there, but the cord is missing. So what we've got to do is run a new cord in this cavity up through that wheel and back down into this window. Jesus has already taken off all of the trim pieces and the metal track that holds the window in place. So in theory, this one should come out. You see, it pops right out. So there is that rope working that one. And we've got to pull this one out and replace it. So if you look at the side of the window, there is a track that that cord fits in. It is nailed in two places inside that track. So we've got to get those nails out first and then discard the old one and then snake the new one up in. So that one came out pretty easy. Just using a little needle nose pliers to pop that old one off. And then decide if we wanna to try to pull the old nails out. Honestly, they're in there so good, I think we would rather just tap them in further. So this is the sash cord that we're gonna be using to replace the broken cord. So I've got a big length of this. And this is gonna start by just fitting right in that window little track. So we're gonna put that in there and then tap some little nails in place to hold it. Okay, so you see my sash cord. I just took some little tacks, tacked it in place. I'm gonna work this back into where it would go. Now, usually there's a metal track right here, but we had to pop that out so that I could get the door out. So Jesus will come back and put a track in here, just like we have one there. So the next thing I have to do is cut this, snake it through up there, and then add another weight. Okay, so I got so excited working on this that I forgot to film what I did. So you saw me put this rope, attach it to the window, I fed it up, so you can see that, through, and then tied the weight to it. But don't worry, there's like 10 more, so you'll see other examples. So now, as this window sash moves up, this weight will come down. So there we go. The window stays because a weight right here and a weight in here is keeping it counterbalanced. And then when you pull it back down, that window weight moves up. All right, one down, 10 more to go. All right, we're gonna try again. So here's the second window. The window is popped out of the track. 
Here's our new sash cord. I pulled the old one out already. I've used a few little tacks to tack it into that track. Now we're gonna cut it and go up and over with it. So I told you we had to cut it and go up and over. So I kind of guesstimate about what size we need. And then sometimes these are easy and sometimes these are tricky. So far these two have gone in really easy. And you can see we're just stuffing it into that cavity. And then when we pull it tight, and now we will tie a rope to this end. Now, the tying the rope to this end part would be much easier if you did it before you snuck it through, but then you have to guesstimate your length here, and I find it just easier to do a cumbersome tie than to make all of this part down here cumbersome. Okay, so I tied the knot. You have to work it kind of in, back into that cavity. You gotta get it around the plaster. There we go. And then hopefully, there you go. It moves up and down. So I am wrapping up a day. I'm a little bit dirty, but I got a lot done. All the windows downstairs are taken care of. So stay tuned to tomorrow when we work upstairs. All right, so we are not having a good day today at the foul house. Um, we had a decent sized rain last night, nothing huge, but we have a major ceiling problem. Let me show you what's going on. So this is a one story space and we've got water coming down from that ceiling. So when you have water, you have one of two issues. You either have a plumbing problem or you have a roofing problem. And there is no plumbing in this attic space. So you can see we've got nails popping, we've got a crack, a bubble, and water is dripping. If you touch it, water is, is slushing out. So, the roofer is on his way. Let's go outside and I'll show you what we're talking about on the roof. All right, so I'm looking out the window at the roof. Um, that area right there where there's a, the flat roof meets the shingle roof, that is where that wall, where the wet bar is. And right about here is where the exterior wall is. And that crack is running somewhere in between. So we see some places that look a little suspect on the roof. Um, of course, when you've got lots of things happening like valleys and peaks and flashing, you just run a bigger risk of moisture and leaks. So I'm afraid pretty soon this is probably gonna get opened up and we're gonna see exactly where this problem is coming from. We've got our roofer here. Of course, we've got Geo out here because Geo is all knowing. We can't figure it out. We cannot find any water trails where, where we think water could be coming from. So we're gonna keep, keep investigating. We are still stumped, folks. We have lifted and pulled and removed everywhere we could think of, and we can't find any wet spots. So we just don't understand what's going on. Our next step, maybe we have to open up that ceiling, which we're gonna have to repair that ceiling anyway, but we just, we're stumped. All right, option number two, is to cut out some of the ceiling. We're gonna to have to do that anyway. See if we can figure out where the water's coming from the, from this angle. folks that was a little gusher right there so there's definitely a good bit of water in there how long has it been there I don't know we got a blanket down we're gonna put some plastic down Whew. we got a mess y'all we got a mess so we have not figured out where the water's coming from but we have figured out what we think is happening up there so we did have some rain last night 
but nothing major. We think that water's been up there for a while. And you remember there's that beadboard ceiling and we hung the sheetrock beneath it. So that water has been sealed in pretty good because you've got all that beadboard with years of oil-based paints that were sealing all that water in. And that wood has slowly absorbed that water and it's finally buckled from so much moisture in the wood and the weight of that pushed down on the sheetrock. Y'all, what would we do without Geo? He just climbed up in that hole and he he's in there and he's going to investigate what's going on. All right, so thanks to Giovanni who climbed up in this tiny little attic, we have figured out where it is coming from. It is all happening in that intersection right there where that rubber roof ties in to that valley right there so we've opened it up downstairs pretty good we're gonna let them tackle fixing the top first and then we'll fix the mess downstairs all right so a few days have gone by since you saw us in here working on those windows and we took care of the windows upstairs and I didn't get footage of that. But you can see that the trim is back in place. So let's go see if they raise and lower properly. All right, if you remember, this metal track stayed because this one did not need to be replaced. But we took this metal track out, it's gone back in. The window stop and the window trim have been replaced or reinstalled. And hopefully with one hand, this window will move up and down easily, and it does. So these windows are good as new. They move up and down well, the weights are in, the cords are in good shape. We replaced all of the cords that were broken, and we also checked because where they get brittle is up there near that wheel usually, or right here where they go into that track. So we made sure that all the ones that weren't broken were still in good condition. And I feel confident that these windows are gonna raise and lower for a long time to come. All right, finishing up the week. So no real updates here. I showed you that they fixed our roof. We are leaving this as it is for just a little bit. We want that to completely dry out up there before we seal it back up. We've got to cut a little bit more, obviously, the sheetrock is still cracked. We've got to replace the piece of sheetrock. We've got to get rid of that bowed, a damaged beadboard that's up there as well. So we got more work to do. You'll see that in the coming weeks. But right now, the most important thing is that it dry out. Okay, so that's a wrap on another week. There was a lot of things going on, but I really wanted you to see that window repair because that is important in these old homes. I didn't want you to see this because I didn't want this to happen, but a roof leak and how to fix that is also important, especially in an old home. So come back next week. We may still be tackling this problem. We're still working on lots of projects all over the house. So we'll be here. I hope you will too.